Hi, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots, where we share knowledge to accelerate robotics. Imagine you're developing a robot lawnmower. Do you really want to bring it out here to try out new behavior? Developing robotics is slow and very expensive, but you can speed it up using simulation. By using simulation, you can run a robot from a known state every single time to test new changes before you go and test it for real, which means that you only need to test it outside some of the time. The trouble with simulation is that it can take some really powerful computers to get working properly, which is why I'm showing you how to run it in Amazon EC2, where you can provision an instance on demand and only pay for the time that instance is running. I'll show you how to provision an instance, how to set up O3DE on it, and show you the robot simulation in action. Let's start by looking at O3DE. Here we are on the O3DE homepage. And as it tells us, it's an open source, real-time 3D engine, and it's completely open source and free to use. We can see some of the examples that are here, and in particular, what we're interested in is this robotics industry. If we click on here, we can see different areas that O3D becomes really useful for doing robotic simulations, including some example videos. This website will be linked in the description. Feel free to have a look and see what kind of examples are available. One of the examples made with Robotic AI, I believe that's how it was pronounced, got a lot of attention at the last ROSCON, the ROS conference, and it was with this demo. And this is the demo that I'm going to show you how to build today using EC2. So let's get started on actually provisioning an EC2 instance that this can run on. One of the things that we can see from the readme on this page, which has all the setup instructions, is the platform requirements. You can see that it's got some specs listed here. It's got quite a powerful GPU it needs, 64 gig of RAM, etc. Now we can use an EC2 instance that meets all of these parameters. We just need to select it from EC2. So let's see how to provision that EC2 instance. We're going to log in to our AWS account and go to the EC2 homepage. And we're going to go to the instances page. Now here I've already got my O3D simulation. So I'm going to launch a new instance and show you the steps that I went through to build this. So I'm going to call it O3D Simulation 2 because it's my second instance of this. Next, you choose your Amazon Machine Image or AMI. And this, this is the way that you can choose which operating system is running on it. There's a few available and we're interested in Ubuntu because that's the easiest system to get working with ROS, even though ROS2 supports different operating systems. So Ubuntu, and then we can select the particular AMI from inside. So these are all Ubuntu, but different versions of Ubuntu. And the Ubuntu version that I'm recommending for this is this deep learning base. That's because, confirm changes here, that's because it already has the NVIDIA graphics drivers installed. You could use the default Ubuntu, but you would need to install the graphics drivers yourself, which isn't too difficult, but this just saves us a step. And then going to scroll down a bit further, and this is where we can select the instance type. Now the instance types are grouped into families, which are what those instance types are intended for, uh, what they're good at. For us, we want to use G5 instance family because that's the graphics instances. Any of these instances will come with a GPU card available to that machine. So I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'm gonna click 4X large. And that's because that instance comes with 64 gigabytes of memory, which is what was required according to the demo we can see here on my page that on-demand Linux pricing is $1.62 per hour. That's the base cost of the image. We then have to pay more for network costs and for the attached volume, but those would be comparatively small. And this cost would only be charged while the instance itself is running. Next, I would choose a key pair and I'm going to choose proceed without. And that's because there's a, a tool called connect, which lets us connect without a key pair and once we've done enough setup to get our remote desktop working, we won't need SSH keys to be able to use that. So we don't need our own SSH key at all here. Next, I'm going to create a security group. Now what this is, is that EC2 instances will block all ports by default. And the port determines what traffic, what internet connections are allowed to be made. For us, we want to allow SSH connections so that EC2 Connect can work and we want to allow DCV connections. That's our remote desktop viewer. So for that, we need ports 22 for SSH and 8443 for DCV. And I'll show you how to set those up. So we're going to click on the edit button. We're going to use a new security group. We've already got SSH set up. 
and it's set to allow a connection from anywhere on port 22. So we're just going to add one more rule. This is custom TCP. It will be allowed from anywhere and our port will be 8443. And if you want here, you can add a label to tell you what this is for. So I'm going to call this DCV access. That's it for security groups. Now the last step is to configure storage here. We actually need more than 65 gigabytes to store all the assets for the simulation engine. So I'm going to increase this to 120 gigabytes. And that's everything that we need to do. So with that, I'm going to click launch instance. Here is our connect to your instance box. And this is how we're going to set up the remote desktop. And here we are, the instance is up and running and we can now start using commands in it. Now for this setup process, I'm going to be copying and pasting commands in because there's quite a lot to get through. If you want to follow along, there's a link to my blog post in the description that will have boxes of code that you can just click to copy and paste into your EC2 instances exactly the way that I am. So the first step that we want to do is to set up the remote desktop viewer. Now I'll link the instructions for installing DCV in the description, but we need to install some prerequisites. First off, we need a desktop manager that DCV supports. So we're going to switch to a GNOME desktop manager. And I'll paste these in and just wait for the machine to finish its initial update and upgrade of existing packages, followed by the installation of that desktop manager. And with that, all of our prerequisites are installed. Now we can install the server itself. So I'm going to paste these instructions in. Once that's complete, I'm going to reboot to make sure all of the changes take effect. Now that the machine's rebooted, it's time to do some configuration of DCV, starting with session creation. DCV works by having a session that our user can join, and we can configure it to automatically create a session. I'm going to paste in a few commands. And these will edit the configuration file automatically. Now we can enable and start the server. Enabling means that it will start automatically after reboots and start will start it immediately. We're so close to complete and there's one last step, which is that the Ubuntu user on an EC2 instance by default doesn't have a password, but we need a password to be able to connect using DCV. So I'm now going to set a password for the Ubuntu user. And with that, my DCV installation is complete. We're now ready to try and connect using DCV. Now, it is possible to connect to DCV using a web browser. I think in order to do that, it requires some configuration I've not set up. So if that's something you want to do, feel free to look it up and configure for yourself. But I'm going to use the DCV client. The last thing I want to get from the EC2 instance list is the public IPv4 address of the instance I'm trying to connect to. So now let's switch to our DCV window and paste that IP address in. We can trust and connect and then enter the username and the password. That will open up the remote desktop viewer and again we'll have to sign in with the same password. And then I can full screen it and we're ready to begin installing all of our ROS2 and O3DE dependencies, starting with ROS2. So for this I'm going to open up a terminal and then I'm going to paste the ROS2 installation commands in. Now, because I've already got this instance set up, I'm going to skip a lot of these steps, but I'll show you what instructions I'm executing. And again, you can copy these out of the blog directly into your terminal and they should work without any changes. So from here, I can check that my ROS2 installation is working by checking the version. And although version's not a recognized argument, it is at least responding, so ROS2 is installed. Now, the next step is to set a couple of environment variables that we'll want to keep reusing for future terminal sessions. So we want to add those to the bash RC. So for that, I can paste these commands in to add that to the bash RC and then source it so we have those immediately available. I've already added these to the bash RC, which I can show you. At the bottom, we have this source line that will automatically source our ROS2 installation and this RMW implementation line. This is for the middleware to use by default with ROS. We set it to Cyclone DDS instead of the default because that's the middleware that O3D is expecting and knows how to work with. We've also got this line, this work directory. This is what we're going to use when we're checking out the dependencies from online. Now that ROS2 itself is installed, we want to install a few more dependencies on top of that, to make sure that our ROS2 workspaces are able to build. For that, I'll paste this installation command in. As the workspace is already set up, all of these dependencies are already installed for me, so we can move on to the next step. There are further ROS dependencies to install, but we can't install them yet because we want the source code checked out 
to use the ROS DEP tool. So for now, let's move to the next step and come back to the dependencies. The next step is to install the prerequisites for O3DE. There are a few options for installing O3DE. We could install it using Snap, we could build it from source, but in our case, we're going to download the pre-built SDK. We'll still need to be able to build the level that we're downloading from the sample application. So for that reason, we still need to install some dependencies ready for that build. So these are my dependencies. And again, all of these are already installed. Next, we'll use a command to download the pre-built O3DE and install it, which is here. With that complete and the engine installed, we want to make sure that we're creating a work directory for the remaining dependencies. We're going to use this work directory to check out any additions for O3DE, also known as gems, which give us extra functionality. For example, the human worker gem is an add-on that simulates human workers inside your level. So we'll check out all of the dependencies in this work directory, including the sample application itself. So we're again going to create another environment variable and then source that environment variable. Next, we're going to check out all of those gems, those extras, including the human worker gem and a few others. With this set of commands, we're creating the work directory, checking out all the code that we need to into it, and then registering all of those artifacts with the O3D engine so that it knows where to find those gems on the system. We're also, as part of this command, using git lfs, which is used for downloading large files that git isn't well built to deal with. So if we execute this, once complete, we'll have all of the dependencies needed to build the level. Finally, we're checking out the application itself, the ROSCON 2023 demo. For that, we can again use git lfs to download those large files that git isn't well built to handle. Once complete, we can go back to that ROS dependency installation because there was one missing step, which is using ROSDEP to install those missing dependencies. And that's what we're going to do now. We can enter the ROS2 workspace inside that sample application and make sure that ROSDEP has installed everything we need to build the ROS2 workspace. Now we're ready to build the full workspace. This is a normal Colcon build command, and it'll take a few minutes the first time round, but once it's been built once, it'll be pretty quick afterwards. And with that build finished, we're ready to launch O3DE. Now for this next step, you may require a reboot for O3DE to function correctly. You can run O3DE, and if it doesn't respond, or if it's slow to respond, or if it brings you a gray screen in the next few steps, try rebooting before you try the next few steps again. So I'm going to launch O3DE now. I'm just typing O3DE into the terminal. And we finally reached launching our simulator. Now at this point, this project won't appear by default. You need to open an existing project and select it. So up here, we can click open existing project. And then we're going to navigate to the work directory, which is in home Ubuntu O3DE work dir. Within this, we've got the ROSCON 2023 demo, and within that, the project directory, which contains project.json. You can open this up, and it should successfully import the project. Once that's done, we need to build the project. This is a step that's required for all levels so that it's ready to run within O3DE. I've already got this project pre-built, but the first time you open the project, the button here will say build project. If you do need to rebuild it, this drop-down menu has build as an available option. I'm going to now click open editor to launch that level. This will take a short while to open as it connects to the asset processor, compiles those assets that haven't been built yet, and finally launches the level. Now we've opened the project, we need to load the level. Again, we have this available as an existing level, so we can click open and then expand the levels directory and click demo level one. Once we open this up, our warehouse simulation level will be ready for us. Demo level one contains four mobile robots that are moving around. Demo level two is a stretch goal. If you want to really tax the system and see how well it can perform, try opening that up. It has a lot more robots in ready to be simulated. Here we have our error log, it's showing a bunch of warnings. Um, we don't need to worry too much about the warnings, we can just ignore these. And we're ready now to click the play button in the top right here. This will launch the simulation and start to accept input into the simulation. 
Once this starts running, our robots are idle, our robot arms, and the packages are starting to roll towards the robot arms. Now we're going to open the terminal back up and open a new tab. And here we're going to launch the script that starts the robots running, the simulated robots. Once we execute this launch script, our mobile robots will start spawning in and our robot arms will start to pick packages and place them onto those robots carrying pallets. So let's see it in action. And here they are starting to spawn in. Now there's a few hotkeys that we can use for navigating around the level. The numbers one to four will show the different robot arm stations that are picking packages. One, two, three, and four. We also have five to show the middle of the warehouse floor, which shows where the mobile robots will pass through on their way to load those packages onto trucks. And six will show the loading bays where the trucks are ready to receive those boxes. Now, if we go back to one, we can see those robots entering their bays, ready to start receiving packages. And there we have our full simulation running in the cloud, ready to turn on and off on demand. We can shut down the instance here and restart it at a later time once we want to run more simulations, or we can terminate the instance to make sure that the EC2 instance is gone permanently. To do that, we can tick our instance and click Instance State Terminate. This will delete the drive associated with the instance and any instance metadata, including any setup we've done, but we'll guarantee that we won't get any more costs from running this instance. And there we have our simulation running. We could now use this to test changes we make to the robot software and quickly change those things happening live in the simulation or restarting from a known point so that we get the same behavior every time. It means that our development cycle is much more repeatable and predictable, which will save us time in development. So there we have it. We've seen a simulation running using O3DE in the cloud using an Amazon EC2 GPU-backed instance. We've seen four mobile robots carrying goods loaded by four robot arms in a warehouse simulation. And we've seen how to provision that EC2 instance and how to set up that simulation to get it going. Now it's up to you. Can you get that same simulation running? And if you can, can you go the next step and provision 32 robots to work at the same time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.